Good morning, church. Thank you for joining us this morning as we study God's Word. And I hope you had a good Christmas. You know, Christmas season is one of my favorite times of year. And one of the reasons is people love to talk about joy. You know, we sing the song, Joy to the World, for example. And But I want us to take a moment and maybe redefine how we use the word joy. Because joy doesn't necessarily mean happiness. Because happiness is a feeling of feeling good depending on your circumstances, whereas joy is a certain mindset and perspective based off of truths you've discovered. And the greatest truth we have discovered is Jesus. Now, I want you to have joy. And, and honestly, when I read about joy in the Bible, I really discover that it's joy that helps us to endure hardship endure suffering, the hardest parts in our lives. And people often say, how do I endure the hard parts of my life? How do I overcome the day-to-day -day grind of things that are unjust or unfair to me? The answer is joy. The choice to think and live and act a certain way based off the truth from God's word, especially the truth of who Jesus is and what he has done. But I want us to step back and think of joy and change our way of thinking. And oftentimes we associate joy with this idea that it only comes when good things are happening to us. When things are good, then we can be joyful and excited and happy. But what about the times when life isn't so easy? When being a Christian is difficult, that you're suffering because of your faithfulness to Christ, his church, and his word? What happens when you deal with people persecuting you or insulting you or socially harassing you because you believe what the Bible says? You hold to moral standards. You say and do the things Jesus said and did. That's not always easy. But I can tell you, when you understand that joy comes from being like Jesus and truly loving Jesus and doing what Jesus did, then it helps us be renewed in our souls to say, I can overcome today with God's help. Today, I will choose joy that no matter what circumstance happens, it never changes the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. It never changes the fact that Jesus loves me. It never changes the fact that I can have the grace and mercy and the forgiveness of my sins through him. So I want you to understand, regardless of circumstances, you can always have joy because of Jesus. And in fact, joy sometimes, as a Christian, as you're maturing and growing in your faith, joy is actually discovered not when times are easy and good. It's actually discovered when times are unjust, hard, difficult. When you're faithfulness to Christ and in the church and his word are tested. When your allegiance and your love for Christ is tested, will you stand the test? Will you say, no matter what, I love Jesus first and most? You know, in the Bible, we know that joy comes in many forms, and one of them comes in the form of suffering. And in fact, James, the Lord's brother, says in James 1, 2, he says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Do you see how sometimes suffering and hardship and trials are actually necessary for you to have your prayer answered to God, saying, God, Mature my faith. Strengthen my faith. Help me to be more like you. We don't realize that it's actually through trials that these things happen. That's why when suffering and trials and hardships and injustice happens to us, we don't sit around and whine and complain. We take a moment, step back, think of Jesus and what he had endured, and we say, I'm being treated just like Jesus. I'm enduring just like Jesus. And I'm maturing. You know, maturity happens through experience of difficulties. So that way you know how to overcome it the next time. 
That's why joy is so important here. Because joy is developed in trials. And we have a hard time always associating that with hardship. But this is exactly how it's defined with Jesus. In Jesus' Jesus's case, in Hebrews chapter 12, he says, it, the Hebrew writer writes this about Jesus. On he, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 through 3. It says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You see, in James' passage, he talks about how trials should be joyful experiences because it helps us mature, helps us to persevere. In this passage, we see that the Hebrew writer says, this is how we persevere. We don't grow weary. We don't get tired because we're constantly dwelling on Jesus. And what did Jesus do? He suffered at the hands of evil, wicked, sinful men. It says that joy was set before him. Well, what joy? His circumstance wasn't very good. It says that he endured the cross. You know, most of us wouldn't think that dying painfully in an unjust way would be a joyous occasion. But to Jesus, it was. It wasn't fun. It wasn't happy. But it was joyful. Because Jesus knew that it would glorify God and that it would save you and me. He loved you so much. He was willing to endure that. That's why he was able to be joyful. Because the experience was overwhelmed with love rather than sorrow and complaining. He was willing to endure a cross in joy. So are we willing to do that? You know, in our culture, we, we find it just in our minds to whine and complain if we suffer. We think suffering is a horrible thing. We hear about injustice. Well, that's not fair. We should stand up against injustices. And in some cases, we should. But sometimes we have to realize we're going to suffer for Jesus. And in fact, that's how God matures us. You know, Romans and in James both mention how suffering is the way that God develops perseverance and character in our lives. Without them, you won't develop perseverance and character. What is there to persevere? How will you gain experience to endure something harder if you don't endure some of those hard things? But can you have joy in those things? You know, what, what if in America, for instance, we know it's becoming more and more godless. Instead of just sitting and whining and complaining about it, why not smile and say, you know what? God has really given me an opportunity to humble myself and depend on him more than I ever have before. He's putting me to the test where I can trust in his wisdom and his strength rather than my own wisdom and strength. That when we are willing to endure for him, we can look back and say, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I love him. Because look at what I was willing to endure for him. And look at how the world is trying to treat me. You know, we often equate joy with comfort. Do you remember one of the temptations Satan offered Jesus? It wasn't a cross. It was comfort with the kingdoms of the world. Sometimes Satan does the same thing. He says, you want a happy life? You want a joyfully, joyful life? In his perspective, then just pursue comfort, ease. No one should harass you. No one should persecute you. You should never have your ego insulted. But Jesus was the son of God and is the son of God, and he was willing to endure that. Are we taking joy and saying, yes, I get to endure. Yes, I know I'm strong in Christ. Yes, if I endured something so horrible as this, then the daily thing that I'm enduring today is nothing. I mean, look at the most mature people in the Bible and look at the most mature Christians you probably know. I can guarantee you they probably didn't have easy lives. But what defined them was they didn't let the bad things destroy their joy. They let Jesus define it. And I want us to think in this culture where everyone is offended by everything, and we cry out injustice on everything. 
What if we said, you know, as a Christian, we shouldn't be harassed. We're children of God. We're trying to do the right thing. We have the biblical morality. What if we were willing to lose everything for him and celebrate? That doesn't make sense. Why would we ever do that? Are we going to lose our rights as Christians in America? Probably. Are we going to lose some of the freedoms and some of the things that we own and are able to do? Probably. But despite that, are you willing to still have joy? And maybe even celebrate it and say, you know what? You can do all you want, but you're never going to destroy my faith. You're never going to cause me to shirk down. You're not going to cause me to stop doing the will of God. And in fact, every time you push against me and hurt me, I'm going to smile and celebrate because I'm becoming more like Jesus. Part of the evidence that you are a follower of Jesus is that as Jesus made known, is you're going to be treated just like him. He even said, you know, people are going to hate you, literally hate you, because they hated me first. Are you hated? And do you celebrate being hated? I'm not saying be self-righteous and be a jerk about it, but taking a peace and a joy knowing, you know, I'm doing the right thing in a humility. I'm enduring this because... They, they would have done the same thing to Jesus. And take joy in that. Not pride, but joy. Now, one of the things that the Hebrew writer also wrote was he talked about this idea of perseverance and joy. And as I mentioned before, per perseverance comes from enduring trials with joy. We saw that in Hebrews 12 too. We saw that in James 1. Now, in Hebrews 10, the Hebrew writer is going to encourage the followers of Jesus to... Stand firm. He's going to encourage them to be faithful, to persevere, and not shirk down, not to cower, not to give up. And in fact, this scripture here makes known that God is displeased and heartbroken, actually, when we shirk down. You know, one of the reasons why I think this message is so important is in 2020, there's a lot of things that have discouraged people. But we should be joyful instead. We should be excited because the fact of who Jesus is and what he has done and his purpose and his mission have not stopped. You're still saved in Christ. Jesus still loves you. Jesus is the son of God. God is in control. Do you believe those things? And if you do, you can smile and have a joy and a peace. And in fact, when you suffer, you might even take delight in it. And you'd think that makes no sense. Well, Jesus took joy in a cross because he knew what the result of that cross would mean. So for us, when people harass us socially, when people try to take our rights, when people even take our possessions, we smile and we celebrate because they're just legitimizing the fact that we're following Jesus just as he has called us to and we haven't given up. And in fact, we celebrate because we're becoming more like him. I want us to, have, to follow what the Hebrew writer here is, says that I'm going to read in just a moment. Because maybe it'll change your perspective on joy. So that you realize, you know what, 2020 really wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I'm not going to let COVID prevent my faithfulness to Christ in the church. I'm not going to let elections affect my faithfulness to Christ in the church. I'm not going to let social injustices affect my relationship to Christ and the church. And in fact, all the trials, all the injustices, all the harassments, all the loss of rights, I'll still celebrate. I'll still have joy. And I will not give up. I will not grow weary. I will not shirk down. Because Jesus still sits on the throne. Jesus still loves me. And Jesus still saved me. In Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 32 to the end of the chapter, which is verse 39. I want you to see how Jesus, uh, the Hebrew writer is calling us to be faithful to Jesus and persevere, not to shirk down, but to have joy. And he reminds them, remember how you had joy when you suffered. He wasn't saying, remember when you had joy when God made everything easy and you had health and wealth. No, the Hebrew writer is going to say, remember the joy you had when you were losing everything and suffering for Christ. 
That's the right mindset for Christians. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32, it says, Remember those early days after you had received the light, when you stood your ground in a great contest in the face of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times, you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You sympathized with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he promised. For in just a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. And if he shirks, if he shirks back, I will not be pleased with him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believed and are saved. You see, we, we take joy because this world's not our world. The, our possessions of this world are not the eternal possessions. This is why we take joy, because we're going to be in eternity in heaven with God forever. And if we persevere, we're going to receive the rewards and the promises God has given us. We don't deserve those eternal circumstances, but God is willing to give them to us. And if we really want to please God, do his will. Don't shrink back. Don't quit. I know there's so many things that can discourage your faith right now, and you may be tempted to stop watching the lessons online. You might quit attending worship services. You might quit reading your Bible. You might quit because people are hurting your feelings on social media. You might lose rights in America, even. Don't let any of those things ever discourage you, make you grow weary, or lose your joy. You know, this whole quarter we talked about sacrifice. Well, sacrifice, which we have made known, draws us closer to God and God to us. Well, sacrifice means enduring trials as well, but seeing those trials as an opportunity, as a joy, as another way to bring glory to God and to grow closer to Him and to be like Him. If those are your goals, then suffering isn't seen as a bad thing. Struggle isn't seen as a hard thing. Hardship and injustice aren't the worst things in the world because you know from God's word, it's maturing you, strengthening you, and bringing glory to God. So I encourage you to sacrifice. Sacrifice by having joy in suffering. When times are unjust, when people persecute you, when people insult you, People are going to insult us when we stand and speak the name of Jesus. People are going to insult us when we stand up for biblical morality and are unashamed to speak it. Which I hope next year we will, especially. But we're not going to shrink down. We live by faith. And we bring pleasure to God. So I want to encourage all of you, don't grow weary. Don't let the trials of COVID and elections and social problems the economy, whatever it may be, or personal problems in your life, don't let them cause you to be weary and quit on Jesus. Don't shrink back. Don't displease God. But in fact, see them as opportunities to be like Him. Consider it pure joy. So thank you so much for joining us today as we studied God's Word. We love you.